Hey guys, there's an exercise that I want to share with you that I think helps a lot of students uh, kind of learn the modes and learn how to make the modes work for them. I think it took me 10 different times of hearing different people explain how they thought of modes before I kind of sunk into it. So I'm going to assume you know a little bit about modes. Basically, there's seven notes in a scale. To get a chord from any scale, you take that the one, three, five, seven. And since there's seven notes in the scale, you can start on any of those. And because of the intervallic shape of a major scale, there's going to be seven different shaped scales in one diatonic family. But basically, if I know my A mixolydian scale, let's say I've been learning uh, some lick off a record. Say the lick is something as simple as... Let's just take the first part of that. Now, I know automatically just from being a guitar player and the way it works like a slide rule that pretty much where my A7 chord falls, I started the lick on that, on the root of the A7. Try calling out, I'll call this exercise calling out the intervals. That's not a very good title, but that's what we're doing. So instead of going, instead of thinking A, F sharp, G, natural E, D, I'm going to take the interval of the scale we're in. We're in A mixolydian, A7, so it's going to be root, 6, 7, dominant 7, and then 5, 4. Call that the intervals. And when I call it a chord tone in any of these sequences, I want to relate it to some kind of chord shape that's on the fretboard. So, root, oh, I see that in my A7. Seven. Oh yeah, my dominant seven. Five. Oh yeah, my five's in the top of the A7 chord. Now I'm going to continue that little motif, as it were, all the way up the fretboard, uh, using the same string, starting on the next diatonic note. Okay. Follow me? But we're going to call out those intervals. So we had root, six, seven, five, four. Now it's going to be two, seven, root, six, five. Uh, I can tell that there's my A7. It all falls right into place if you know your chord shapes. Three, root, two, seven, six. Knowing that A7 is the fifth mode in the key of D, that means there's all these other modes out there lurking that actually contain the same notes, right? So, I mean, it's not very often that anybody ever came to me and said, let's jam in C Locrian today, Alan. Uh, usually we jam in the basic uh, uh, guitar modes, which are pretty much Dorian, which is built from the second degree, Mixolydian, which is built from the fifth, and Ionian, which is built from the uh, root. Now those would be just the three out of the seven. They're all useful, but these are the ones that are probably most used, I would think. But this time we're going to call out the notes, the intervals, as they relate to the E Dorian mode. So it's now going to be four, two, three, root, seven of E minor. Get E minor in your head. And here we go. So now it's four, two, three, root seven, five, three, four, nine, two. And we, the first one, five, must be a chord tone. Oh yeah, it's in my E minor chord. Etc. Six, four, five, three, two. Seven, five, six, four, three. And this process continues. Now, another essential mode that we would probably use a lot is Ionian. Play the same lick but relate it to uh, D major. So it would be 
five, three, four, nine root. Six, four, five, three, two. Process continues, but now I'm relating them all to D major. So this process continues. So say we're jamming someplace and you learn a really cool lick in A7, and the lick is a blues lick that's like a. Something like that, right? That's kind of a cool lick. We well, should always analyze it as it relates to the chord that's being played underneath the vamp. In this case, A7. And I'm going to analyze this as 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, root, walk down chromatically to the 7, and on the A. I can take the same lick and now play it and apply it over E minor. Sounds great in the E minor. to the root. I could apply the same one. What's, what have we left out? How about D major, right? Uh, e, put the mode in your head. And we might want to resolve it to a chord tone. To summarize, if you know your modes, then one lick shouldn't be just one lick in one scale over one scale. It should be one lick that you can apply over all the related modes. But if you get used to doing this, and if you do it often enough, it'll become routine, and you'll find that one lick will expand your vocabulary immensely.